Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the pastors who subdued a offender. And it's a crazy story. This happened very close to my store, within two miles of my store. And it was quite scary. I didn't actually know what was happening, but a lot of police officers came and they blocked the whole sector. And I'm so glad that we have decided to operate in the manner that we do because it gives us more safety. The population where I live, and there will be some people who have never been here and they say, oh, don't, you're exaggerating, exaggerating. No, I live pretty close to a mall they call Gunpoint. And the reason they call this mall Gunpoint was I took my intern there one day and there was blood at a jewelry store and apparently there was a shooting that it was a Saturday at 1 p.m. Just a random Saturday in summer at 1 p.m. And my intern was like, oh my God, this is like real. Like he didn't believe it. He didn't believe it. Eric told me that it was all fake and fake news. And I was like, you know, I'm going to take you to Gunpoint, but in the most safe place. The place is obviously not called Gunpoint. It's called Greenpoint Mall. So on Thursday afternoon at the Fall Creek neighborhood in Humble, a cell phone video captured a Harris County deputy in a vicious battle with a suspect. Pastors, Pasal, so these are pastors who are looking to buy a home. Obviously, I don't think they're going to buy a home now, given the violence and the violent individuals who live very close to my store. We went to view a property in the Fall Creek area. We were checking the property, and as we came out, we realized there was an officer that was trying to make an arrest. Sahid said, okay, pretty normal, right? Except the officer was getting his ass handed to him. He was getting beat down by the suspect who may or may not have been on drugs. His family members actually eventually rushed in to beat down the officer even more. So it's one officer versus multiple suspects. And luckily the pastors were there. Otherwise things would get out of control. This is a day to day occurrence where I live. My store is near two bars. One of them, I believe, is kind of an Irish bar ta tavern. The other one is a far shadier place where if you go inside, uh, there is mode everywhere. And at first I thought it was just decorations, but it's legit black mode. At first they said the deputy attempted to give the suspect orders to remain on the ground, but the suspect refused and charged at the officer. The officer pulled out his taser. The guy jumped up really fast and the officer tased him and he just snatched the taser out of his chest and he just began to fight with the officer. So he said, the couple said they decided to pull out their cell phones and record the deputy who had his bulletproof vest partially ripped by the suspect in struggling to keep the suspect contained. They said the suspect then managed to punch the deputy several times. It's all caught on video. It's, I mean, you can Google it and watch the video. It's pretty bad. The officer is getting his ass beat pretty badly. I don't know how one rips a bullet chest. I mean, imagine this. The dude is high or on drugs. He gets tasered. And it doesn't affect him. He's like an incredible Hulk. And then he goes and punches the officer multiple times, rips out, rips his bulletproof vest apart, starts grabbing for his gun. And the only people that can save us are these random people looking at homes. This is happening, by the way, on a Saturday at an open house for my neighbor. Just sometimes I think about this stuff and where I live and like, it's just astounding. Um, if you stay, uh, I, by policy, it is a policy that he, okay, let's continue. He put a triangle MMA move on the officer. I don't know how that officer managed to get out, but he had it on that officer for some, quite some time. So he's choking out this officer. The couple made a split decision to intervene. They said as the suspect managed to escape the deputy again, Yanni tackled the suspect down. Then Paris helped the deputy keep the erratic suspect down. So the wife is like actually involved in this fight too. It's not just the husband, both pastors. The suspect's family tried to intervene in charge at the deputy, but before they did so, Yanti tackled the man according to the couple. Officers arrived at the scene later, because that's what happens and it was eventually contained. The Sahirs were glad to be at the right place at the right time. We didn't have to think 
time to think about the what ifs. The officer's life was in danger at the time. The guy was on top of the officer punching him, so we ran to jump. This is like, you can probably see my store from this area. Like, and these people are not drunk. The family members are coming to attack officers. And this is where I live. And this is where my store is. And a lot of you ask, and I talked to my friend who owns a store where I live and another friend who used to own a store in mall that, you know, it's a dangerous area to open a game store because you're always constantly robbed. People are stealing stuff from you all the time. You might ask, why would I do this? Why the blank would I do this? And to be quite honest, I've always wanted a game store and I know I'm going to bleed money and it's just a bucket list item. I've crossed out off all the bucket list items I only have one left after this, and let's go to Egypt. Everything else in my bucket list, I've won, I've done. Uh, we were supposed to make a bucket list in elementary school, and I made one, and I, I crossed everything off. So, pretty crazy stuff. Um, it is uh, incredibly, I mean, dangerous where I live. A lot of you think it's a joke you, when I show you the demographics and that one in five people live below poverty, one in four people are homeless, uh, there are abandoned dogs, literally every, like I will, if you drive around or walk a dog, so I walk my dog Norman at around one at night, but I just walk around a safe place in my neighborhood, which I'm not going to disclose because now I'm going to get hit by these psychopaths. Uh, and there's so many like wild dogs outside and it's just like is this someone's dog or has it been you know abandoned um there's just so many dogs that are being abandoned all the time and that's when i was fostering those nine dogs in 2017 it wasn't difficult to find them i can tell you that much if i wanted to foster 50 of them i probably could all i had to do was drive around my neighborhood around nighttime and then just open my door and they pop it right in and jump right into my seat it's not a good area like it's i mean we have a really excellent elementary school which i talk about in my other channel uh the thai gore channel which i just made well i i changed the name and it's not like a great area to have a store a lot of you guys um think that i should have fnms i should have pre-releases i should have events i'm telling you it's too dangerous like, I can imagine a pre-release event and then the drunk people, like, two two blocks down with their Irish tavern and then the other drunk people three blocks down with their Modi tavern. Uh, they would, like, fight. They would fight. <laughs> they would, like, scratch their cars. I mean, it's not the best way I can... I think I showed you... If you watch my videos on my other channel, you can actually see me walking through Humble in the daytime, and you can actually see my office, which I point out. And in the daytime, it's not even safe. But at nighttime, we have an employee policy where everyone has to go home by 6. You cannot stay late. If you want to work and continue to work, and a lot of our projects require us to work long hours, then you just come to my home, my home office, which I converted into an office, and work. Every Friday we work here because, you know, we take our laptops to my home office because it's so dangerous to leave our laptops and MacBooks and stuff and anything of value over the weekend because I know that drunk people will try to rob it. And, you know, you ask, how do I know this? Because it happens. Like, it just happens. There's a... Um, the best example I can give you of where I live is we have a humble museum it's been closed since, and still has that sign up, it has been closed since Hurricane Harvey two years ago, two and a half years ago. That is a museum operated right next to the police office station. And it has been, you know, there's squatters and loot. I mean, it's just, look at this dude body slamming this one, his relative. I'm not at all surprised. It's like visual anti stuff. Like we have pastors in broad daylight taking down people attacking police officers two miles away from my place of work in the same neighborhood I live in. And then they cover this up, right? So supposedly uh, when we asked like why is there police officers and stuff, I didn't really know what was going on, but I knew that there was a lot of police officers. They said it was just a domestic dispute. 
Nah, man, they were beating this officer to, like, a pulp. I mean, this officer, if you watch the video, he gets, like, if these pastors don't step in, the the person who's beating the officer would likely, I, I mean, I don't even want to know what would happen because they would be really bad. Remember, the family members of the guy who got tased and was trying to get arrested and who was fighting it, they were around and they rushed in to beat the officer. They charged at the officer even more. Like, who does that? Answer, people who live in Umble. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to give you a little taste of my life. I know it's not like magic related, but kind of is. Because a lot of you ask, why am I not opening my store? Why don't we do f &M? Why don't we do pre-release? I mean, do you guys want to get beat up? Because that's what's going to happen. Anyway, bye guys.